All right, so this is just gonna be a quick video. I had done a video about the cast scratch stock from Lee Valley and how to use it, how to set it up, that kind of stuff. And after doing that video, a viewer asked me to demonstrate how to do this on curved surfaces because if you know the plow planes, the combo planes, curved is not their forte. So that's where one of these excel. I also have the Stanley number 66 because sometimes I like the bigger handles. If I'm doing more like multiple reeds or multiple flutes or big beads or something like that, I like this one because it's just bigger, easier to hold on to. However, for round surfaces, I don't like this one as much because when you are going to put a bead, a flute, a whatever on a round surface, you have to try to keep it in line with itself because if you go this way more, that's going to be a different path that that bead is on. If you go this way, same thing. So you have to try to keep them lined up. And I find that because these are so far apart, it's a little bit more difficult. Now that's going to be a preference thing. You might find that one of these with the longer handles are easier for you to line up. That's your choice. I prefer these little ones just because I feel like it's more connected there. I feel like I'm able to stay more in line. The other thing I want to point out real quick about the Stanley 66, um, these are Lee Nielsen irons. So the Lee Nielsen irons are different from the cast scratch stock irons. I will not be able to show you in camera, but the cast scratch stock are flat all the way around. So there's no bevels, there's no angles on them, nothing like that. When you get to the Lee Nielsen's, there's an angle. So you're going to have to look to see which way the angle's going. So the angle on the tip up here is going this way. So that means I need to hone this side and cut with this side. So that's something to pay attention to. When you hone it, make sure you take it and put it the right orientation in the plane. If you put it to where the angle is going this way, it's just going to skirt across the surface. You need it to have that cut. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how to do this. Now, this is going to be a, this is a piece of pine, not going to be. It is a piece of pine and it is very tough to use a cast scratch stock on because it tears out. It has little micro tear outs through this entire thing. So keep that in mind. You might have to come back and clean it up. If you're going to do the bead and then sand it or plane it or whatever, then, then okay, you might be able to hide that. But keep that in mind. Um, I don't recommend pine for practice with these, especially because of that tear out. But this was the only curved piece I had. The other thing I want to point out is where you hold this and your body position make a big difference. So right here, I'm good. Okay, I'm able to keep it in line with itself. I'm able to go around, but as soon as I start getting right here, I would need to shift my body and move it. So I don't recommend trying to do this entire surface at once. Do one side, loosen your clamp, turn it, do another side, whatever. The other tip that I have is when I was doing just a normal bead, I go back and forth like this, okay? When you do rounds, I do not recommend that. I don't recommend going back and forth because it's very easily gonna get off track. So just go in one direction, okay? And keep doing that over and over again. And then eventually you'll move it to a different side, do that side, keep going. The other thing with this is for the very first cut, same with the longer boards or just the straight boards, you wanna make sure that all of your pressure is against the fence. So the very first cut, all you're doing is scoring it to try to create that curve to have the blade follow that from here on out. You're still gonna have to pay attention to it because you can still make this plane go off like that and you will create a separate bead, you'll create a separate line. Take your time with it, practice it because these are, it's not easy. I mean, I'll just put it that way. It's not easy to do this, it takes time to learn. Um, every time I'm going to put any kind of bead or anything on a curved piece, I cut a different piece, match the angle and practice on there first until I feel like I've got it down and then I go for it. Um, the other thing is, an entirely round surface like this is even gonna be more difficult. If you have a curve that goes like this, it's gonna be the same concept. You're just gonna follow the curve, put your pressure, do you see what I mean? Practice. <laughs> so all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this and the very first one, again, you're going light, most of your pressure is going against the fence and you're trying to stay parallel and you're just gonna focus on that. So very light, no pressure downwards. See the tear out? And there we go, I'm gonna stop here because I feel my body, I would need to shift and I don't wanna go off course. So there's the first little scratch, let me do it again. I'm still not putting any pressure down, I just wanna make this line more prominent. There we go. Yeah, you can see all these little 
I'll have the camera zoom in and show you those little micro tear outs. I'm gonna keep going here, speed up the footage for you. Now I'm gonna start putting pressure down, slight. Now that this line is getting deeper, this is gonna start following it and you're gonna feel it, but you still wanna pay attention to this because you don't wanna get over here and then all of a sudden go off because then you're really gonna have a tough time getting it back, plus you'll have that ugly line. All right, so that line is very well established. If you notice, I'd been at an angle the whole time. I'm gonna start tilting it up because as you go, you're gonna notice that this angle, it's not gonna cut anymore. So I need to go a little bit higher on the angle, cut some more when it stops cutting, go higher on the angle until eventually you end up at 90 degrees. Gonna advance the iron slightly. So right here, I'll try to get it to zoom in. I got a little bit too aggressive and a chip tore out on the bead, which is not good. <laughs> That's why I don't like pine. Whole bunch of tear out right here. Pine wasn't a good choice. I should have cut a piece of maple for you guys, but keep it real. All right, there we go. Let me bring it in and show you guys. All right, so here is the bead that we just cut. Here's the tear out that I was telling you about, which happens a lot with softwood. It just kind of chips out like that. I mean, you still have to worry about it with hardwood, but, and as you can see up here, my clamp was getting in the way, if you saw my hand. <laughs> but that's how you do it. Keep at it, practice, grab a piece of maple. I mean, if you have a board that is the same as the board you're going to use, practice on that board so you know how the wood is going to react. So as I started going across the grain right here, I should have been more gentle. When you're up here, it's a little bit different. When you're down here, it's a little bit different, but going exactly across the grain, be gentle with it, okay? So there you go. Hopefully that helped. Um, I love this little guy. I really like the 66 too, but also, or again, for doing corners like this, doing edges like this, I'm not a big fan of that one. I like the smaller one. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to let us know down below. If you use a different technique, also let us know down below. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a good day.